Hello, friends. I'm Rosie Acosta, your host and guide on this journey to self-discovery and radical love. I've walked a path filled with challenges. Growing up in East LA during the 92 LA riots, it left me searching for meaning, for mentors, for a way to truly understand the purpose of life. But you know what I found? The power of conversation. So I decided to create a space where we can share these conversations with you, our community. And that's how the Radically Loved podcast was born. Join me as we dive into topics like mindfulness, spirituality, self-love, and the keys to overall healthy living. I'm joined by my dear friend, fellow author, producer, and teacher, Tessa Tovar. Hi, I'm Tessa, and I'm grateful to be part of this community because it teaches me so much about what it means to be human. Ever since I was a little one, I was always asking the deeper questions in life. Why are we here? What happens when we are gone? What is the purpose of life? I love this show because I get to ask the questions that cut right to the meaning of life. I've learned that no matter how much we want the path to be clear, it never is. And that is actually part of the beauty that creates a radically loved life. Please do us a favor, share the episodes you love with your friends and leave us a review. Together, we'll learn how to create a life that's truly, deeply, radically loved. Let's begin. Oh, we're doing that. <laughs> what is that called? La señal, la señal de la cruz, the sign of the, the cross. The sign of the cross. Yeah. Oh. It takes me back to my when my abuelita was still in human form she that was like the thing that I looked forward to the most mm. was her giving me the the blessing her blessing I'm like I felt like she was a sage you know since yeah. I was a little girl it was always you know she would do the send off the sign of the cross like give you a a blessing and as you leave yeah, yeah. I would have her bless my mala beads mm. I would have her bless my you know whatever things that I had um when my book came out, my first, my first book, obviously my only book right now, I'm actually working on a second, that's a separate topic. But, um, when my book first came out, I had her give her, give the, give her that book. (laughs) (laughs) I had her give the book a a little blessing and, and I felt like, yeah, it was, it was good. You know? Mm, Yeah. I love that. I do believe that. I mean, I never had the opportunity to meet your abuelita, but I do believe that she had some magic, definite wisdom and that it makes a difference. It makes an impact. It really does. It really, really does for sure. Yeah. That's so sweet. That's Jorge's mother would do the same thing. Every time we would travel, we would Actually, we would get down on our knees, and it was almost like... Oh, that's like uh, official. But she was a very short woman also, so maybe oh, it was y- y'all you know, are, just better for y'all her. tall. It was ergonomic. <laughs> yeah, it was ergonomic. <laughs> <laughs> We're tall. Like, we're a <laughs> yeah, big... He's a tall he's, person. He's a tall... For a, a Mexican man, I know. he is tall. He's a tall, tall, Six tall foot guy. Two. <laughs> She says it like, okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> well, welcome to the Radically Love podcast. Uh, that's where you are right now. <laughs> so happy to have you here. <laughs> Please do not cut that out. <laughs> oh my gosh, my face is beet red. <laughs> um, yes, welcome to the Radically Loved podcast. How, yeah, what's going on? There's so much, I feel like, to catch listeners up on. It's been a beat since you and I have had a solo interview, which is what we're doing today. And yes, these are some of my favorite conversations because we're just sitting here having tea with each other and we invite you all to do the same. Go grab a cup of tea if, you know, obviously if you're not driving. If you're driving, (laughs) be safe. Eyes Be safe. Maybe have your little to-go mug and have a little Mm -hmm. sip of your to-go. Yeah. Commuter, commuter tea or commuter coffee tea. or whatever. You do. I'm like a tea person, so I'm just always commuting with a beverage. Yeah. <laughs> I always commute with three beverages. I, You know what's really cool that we found? Because uh, you'll remember from teacher training that I always showed up with like three or four beverages. Uh-huh. We all did. A million, yes. <laughs> so now I have this cup holder that sits inside of my cup holder. 
and it has two separate <laughs> places to put my coffee that one rotates out on top and it oh, changes yeah, size. Those. Oh, it's, that's brilliant. I love it. This is so great. It's yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a uh, this is really great. In a way, I'm a little bit uh uh reticent to go into today's conversation mm-hmm. because I feel a little like it's the end of an era. Yeah. I mean, it is. It really and truly is. Okay, should we rip the band yeah, off? Yeah, so ah! so just to announce to everybody, it is the end of an era and it has been I really wanted to make it to the 10 year mark, which would have been next year, 2025, April, I believe. But I think the time has come. And I, and one of the things that I teach, which you know this, Tessa, is Mm -hmm. to know when it's time to shift and to move on. And I feel like after nine years of doing this podcast in the way that it is, is has come to an end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's time to shift the content. It's time to shift the uh, the pathway, the route. And I'm really excited about it, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. It feels like, well, and can we clarify what we mean by shifting and ending oh, and the end yes. of an era? Come on. Okay. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> We're so just so you all know. We're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just a (laughs) rebrand. We're just, we're changing the, the podcast is just going to look different. The next time you see us, the next time you see the Radically Loved podcast, it's going to look different and that's okay. We love change. So many things are changing right now. And I really feel like there's been so many shifts in the last couple of months in the last couple of years, really, that it's really, it's time as the audience grows and as the community grows to heed the calls that we are getting and to really address the topics that are coming up for us, not only you and I, Tessa, as mm-hmm. as we age, as you know, our lives shift. I think it's just my intention in creating the podcast has always been the same and that's not changing to provide information and content and conversations that make you feel either inspired, creative, or supported. And I really think that shifting the content to that is is really it's going to be so much better and it's going to be so much more fun. You know not that this isn't fun, but I really feel like it's just time, you know? Yeah. I do think it's important to not kind of I think this is the difference between being in a rut and a groove, you know, and all yeah. intents and purposes you could look at you know, literally if you're looking at a road that's got a rut or a groove in it, it looks the same. But the connotation of being in a rut is kind of feeling stuck and maybe information feeling a little bit stale, which I don't think that at all about radically loved. But I do think there's it's important to evolve, yes, with the times, with what's salient. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're we're now in our forty. 40- 40th decade and things are changing in our body. Like we're brand new on a cellular level. Yeah. Even every seven years and hormonally. Oh my God. I'm a very different person. (laughs) I mean, yeah. I mean, like think about this. I, I started the podcast when I was 30, like in my early thirties, I'm a completely different person now. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm in a different body now. I'm in a different stage in my life. Obviously, I'm still doing the same thing, but under under different motivations and different inspiration, Mm -hmm. I think. And I think it's really important to be able to talk about it and to tell people. I mean, if those of you that have been here for this long, since the beginning, and I know there are many of you, 
you've seen the podcast shift. We've gone on hiatus. We've changed it. You know, we, we, Tessa was introduced to the podcast, you know, and it's just kind of shifted in different ways. And I think if I'm completely honest, it was really coming from a place of me feeling stagnant with it. Like there is a moment where you start to feel like things are just not moving in a way that you want it to, or you're trying to figure things out. And some people might be the type that they want to take a break and figure out what they're going to do and come back and show up with a full plan and execute it. Mm. I'm not that person. I'm not that way. I'm, I'm very much the, let's throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. I've always been that way because I'm, I'm more of a done is better than good. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really helped me in my endeavors, you know, because Mm -hmm. I, if I sat and questioned myself, I would, I would never do anything because Mm -hmm. I am that way. Innately, I am the person that wants to be very methodical about how I create and how I do things, but it always stops me from actually doing the things that I want to do. And I know that a lot of people can relate to that. So I've learned it's better for me to do things messily and poorly and fail (laughs) and have things not work. And, and, you know, we've talked about this before, you know, try to launch things that didn't go anywhere and spend money on projects that also didn't go anywhere. And I'd rather know than to sit there and try to plan things out perfectly and then have them not work out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And even if you do spend the time to plan, you know what they say about the best laid plans, it might not go your way. I mean, there's so much in life we can't control. And I think we really do ourselves a disservice when we think that perfect is the goal and it really is the enemy of done. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Something I've been kind of meditating on lately reminding me of this is the idea that um, it's not about being perfect, right? Which is what we're talking about. But we, what we practice is what we good at practicing. It doesn't mean that the end result is, oh, we practice it, then we become perfect at it. No, we get good at practicing it though. And it becomes a little bit easier, kind of like lifting weights is an analogy we've used before for that. It doesn't feel good at first. It's challenging. You might feel awkward. It's like, I don't even know if I'm doing this right. But then your muscles learn how to move in that way. And you get a little bit better and your muscles grow. And I mean, I think that's all that we're really saying here is that it it, perfect, I don't think is ever the the goal anyways. Yeah. It's it's not real. I don't think perfect is real. No, it doesn't. It's non-existent. And the thing is, it's like, look, people being in, in the public sphere is twofold. You get incredible amount of feedback and validation that what you're doing is landing. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. But also there is the negative side of that where people's opinions can begin to drive what you do. And then you have to question whether that's in alignment of what you actually want, right? So you've got the pros and the cons. The pros being you get to create something that people can engage with and you can help people or you can inspire people Um on, on a bigger scale. And then the con is that you're subject to criticism. You're subject to people having, you know, a different opinion about how you should approach certain things. And at the end of the day, you really just have to do what's best for you and what is going to inspire you the most. What's Mm going to make you feel like you are driven by your purpose and what is the most authentic thing for you? Yeah, I think that's the key. I think it's you're right. It's so easy to get lost in the the feedback, whether it's positive or negative, and try to steer 
your ship <laughs> based on what the audience is saying. I mean, but like even it's a even zero now, sum game. Yeah, it yeah. totally is a zero sum game. At the end of the like, you know, I, I posted on and my content on Instagram has already shifted. You know, by the mm-hmm. time y'all are listening to this or watching this on YouTube, it's already been shifted. But currently, as I post, there are people that have a strong opinion about the content that I'm posting. And and mm-hmm. that's okay. People people can have that opinion. It's funny when I mention something to Tori, he'll be like, what the fuck does, the, why, what do they care? Like, who fucking cares, you know? Mm. And, and I get that too, you know, it's, it's, in a way, I respect people having a strong opinion about content. That's your opinion. But then you don't have to be here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a choice. Yeah. It's a yeah. choice. We we get to decide the content that we consume. And if I'm making content that you don't want to consume, that's okay. More power to you. I'm I'm actually glad that you have the the self-knowledge and um you know empowerment to say i don't like what you're posting and i'm not going to follow you epic do you that's great have that strong opinion at the same time it's like are you doing it because you have a strong opinion and you're going to move on from this page? Or are you saying it just because you want to get the, a rise or you want to get attention or you're just wanting to spew some negativity? Yeah. You so know? it's really an invitation to kind of self-reflect and be like, hmm, yeah, why am I saying what I'm saying out loud in this public forum? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I take away from that, <laughs> you know, which is, it's a, it's always a good thing to self-reflect and, um, you know, as long as it's <laughs> try not to go down that rabbit hole of, of negativity, but I do think it's important to self reflect and and ask yourself the question: Okay, why am I doing what I'm doing? And so, didn't the great Socrates say this? Is it true? She's quoting Socrates. Let's get it. <laughs> is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Yeah, it's true. And I know that Byron Katie has based a lot of the work called mm-hmm. the work on that as well. And look, I those are also the basis of mindfulness tenets as well. How do we be fully present with what is without judgment? I feel like I totally agree with what you're saying, Tessa. And Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like we just have to do what's going to make us feel happy and content. Yeah. Well, in in the spirit of self-reflection, Rosie, question for you about, you know, coming up to a decade of Radically Loved, do you have any most memorable moments or impactful moments, you oh know, my God. Gr- like any we're not great a- conversations that stand out. I mean, there's so many. It's 500 I remember, plus. I know it's, it's too many. And honestly, like, I think the most, I'm going to go back to the beginning. I think that the most memorable was one of my first conversation I had with Simon Sinek because at the time I was really into his content and I was, you know, really inspired by what he was doing in the world. You know, he's had one of the top most viewed TED Talks. And when I first started reaching out to people in the beginning, man, I got so many rejections. I had so, I got really used to getting rejected. Mm. and. That really served me in the process of getting my first book deal as well. Just getting all the constant like rejections. This isn't good enough. This isn't original. And I've talked about the story before how when I first launched the podcast, I was waiting for like hundreds of people to download it after I hit publish on the first, you know, the first couple. And there was like, there was like two, you know, it was me and Tori, right? It was like, (laughs) that was it. Maybe those three, but my mom, my mom, my mom and Tori were, and myself, we're the three, three listeners. But going back to Simon Sinek, when I reached out to him, you know, I, I told him like, Hey, I'd really love to, you know, have, have you on my podcast. And at the time I was doing phone, it was, it was called Radically Loved Radio. Mm. And it was more of like a call in. So we were doing it. I remember 
I had to plug in my phone into the H4 Zoom to do the call, to record it. And then we had to put it on the computer. It was just more complicated. Now it's like we've got Riverside and there's all these fancy technologies and uh, I didn't even have video. Like it was, it was rough. There was a couple of conversations. I remember another conversation that I had with Danielle Laporte as well. It was funny. She was sipping her tea and I was like, what are you drinking? And she's like, oh, you heard that? while I was on the phone with her. Um, So yeah, Simon Sinek was one of my first big interviews. And I just remember the feeling, that feeling of having had a conversation with somebody that I really looked up to that had no real incentive to talk to me and was just so lovely and so present and so willing to share his wisdom and knowledge that it was in that conversation that I felt the audacity to continue to go on, mm. truly. I think that's so important for people who are thinking about taking on a new project or, or on a path, trying to find their purpose, their dharma, their, their why. Uh, which is what he talks about a lot, Simon Sinek. It's so important for for people like us that are on that path to take chances and to, you know, send those emails, to send, you know, those texts, to ask people for help, to, to really put yourself out there in that way. And I think that for me, to answer your question, starting the podcast really trained me to deal with rejection, to, to practice putting myself out there, to practice sharing authentically. I feel like my edge was always being able to share openly and honestly because I knew that nobody was listening. <laughs> I yeah, felt like nobody's yeah. listening. So I'm just going to say whatever. And then it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a conversation I had with Jill Naus. Again, one of the first one of the first episodes that I, I did. Jill Naus, she's an incredible, very wise yoga teacher in, in Portland, Oregon. And she was one of the first people I started practicing with when I moved up there in 2013. And... Uh, I believe she's still teaching now. She's incredible. We can we can link her in the description. She's just such yeah. a beautiful human being. And I when I started the podcast, a couple I had already been in Portland for a couple of years and I asked her to to come and be on, you know, and her and her lovely husband Michael, they came over to the house and you know, we did it in person. Tori was trying to figure out how to record multiple people into the Zoom. It, it was a mess. You know, we, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. Mm -hmm. But while having that conversation with Jill, I think at one point I say like, oh, don't worry, nobody's listening to this. Like, it doesn't even matter, <laughs> you know, like say whatever. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I, I felt like I said that a lot to the point where it went from a handful of people to now we're having hundreds of people. And I'm like, oh shit, I can't say that anymore. I can't say nobody's, there's actually people listening. And as it continued to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's almost like the stakes got a little higher. Mm. And I started to notice that I was shifting my approach to how I was showing up for the podcast because I felt a little bit more pressure. Mm-hmm. I felt the pressure of needing to be perfect or needing to sound wise or needing to sound more fill in the blank because more people were watching, more people were listening. And I started to feel that's when the shift happened for me where I started to kind of feel a little burnt out. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense if you think about it. When you're not being your fullest most authentic, truest self, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to not be able to be your full self. And a lot of us wear those masks 
in in our daily lives. You know, perhaps like when we go to our corporate job or mm-hmm. when we're just trying to, you know, put on a, a brave face for our friends or, you know, like it is exhausting to not be fully and honestly who you are. And so I think that in the last couple of years, especially as I've shared, you know, going through the fertility journey and the perimenopause and the menopause stuff and just the things that we share, I've I've found that it's more of who I am. And I, and I feel like, I think approaching it from that perspective of, you know, this this indie podcast that I still look at it as has helped me reshape how I want us to approach this, this new venture that we're getting ready to, to hop on to. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so much sense. And I, I, yeah, I think the, just the one thing I want to reiterate out of what you just said, I mean, there's so much there. We could have a whole entire podcast episode on that subject. Well, we're not going anywhere. So uh, I mean, not. we are, but we're not. Yeah. We're just shifting the the focus, the shifting the topic of conversation. Correct. Uh, to be a little bit more, um, I'd say niche, I guess. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but that's niche. what's coming to mind. Niche. niche. Super niche. <laughs> so Rosie, okay. First, before I move on, I want to say the thing that's very salient uh, from what you just said to me is, yeah, it's so hard to show up as your authentic self. It's exhausting, right? To be so tightly controlled of your emotions. And I mean, really, that's what it is at the end of the day. We're we're trying to control the outcome, others' reactions, how we feel, yeah. how we feel we're perceived by others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that's why it's so exhausting because it takes a lot of energy yeah. to, to find that level of control. And I'm still working on it. You know, I'm I'm not perfect in that way. It's it's a lifelong endeavor, it feels to me. But yeah, let's You're not give ourselves perfect. Some Come on. Grace. What? You're not perfect. Oh, no. (laughs) But we can't sunset this radically loved topic podcast without asking the final two questions to our host. And, you know, you typically will ask the guest this. Well, I'm going to turn it on you today, Rosie. She's turning it. (laughs) She's turning it. So, how do you feel radically loved? And what do you radically love? I feel radically loved when I'm able to take my small s self out of the equation. When I can fully just not think about me or my needs, or my wants, or my goals, and I can just be connected to this life as it is in the present moment. That's that's when I feel the most radically loved. And what I radically love is the privilege and the opportunity to be able to share information and ideas and thoughts and teachings with everyone in a way that feels honest, true, and authentic. Mm. Mm. That's so beautiful. So, this you know, is it. Yeah, this is it. And what the a ride. And <laughs> what a ride. It's been so, I mean, look, there's, there's, there's been so, part of me is like, this could have been an hour and a half episode and we could have done, but part of me is like, why? We don't need to do all that. Thank you all so much for being here. It's been such an incredible ride. And, it's good to change. Mm -hmm. It's good to change. And I feel really complete with this podcast and really complete with what I've been able to do in my life, in my professional life, with my community, with you, with, with everything. I'm, I'm, I feel so complete with 
the Radically Loved podcast. And I'm so excited for the next iteration. And I'm so excited to to shift the content. And I'm so excited to get to do this with you. Mm. I am too, Rosie. I mean, I you, you took the words out of my mouth. I I radically love this podcast. I radically love the work I get to do with you. Um, God, I've I can't believe you know. Looking back ten years ago, when I started listening to the podcast as a consumer, as as a listener, and just being able to be on the back end of it for so long. <laughs> What a blast. I have learned so much. I can't even, you know, hard skills, soft skills <laughs> from our guests. It's just like, it's priceless. I can't even put a, there's no words. There's no words. So without further ado, <laughs> thank you all so much for letting me join Rosie on this journey. And we're so excited to have our little shift. It will be, you'll, you'll come back to the same place. It's just going to look a little different. It might sound a little different to your ears, but uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm so excited. Yay. We will see you soon. We will see you soon. Hey friends, thank you so much for listening to the Radically Love podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. It really helps. Also, don't forget to check out the Mindful Love Hub on Substack. This episode was produced by Tessa Tovar, music by DJ Taz Rashid. <laughs>